Okay, I'm not sure if this is working. I don't even know if I've got it set up right because I can't say in Blossoms I'm not here to do it. But it is the 17th of the 1st, 2014. And I've tried to keep quiet about how I feel today, but I can't anymore. Um, learning that another person has died because of the heat this time where my daughter lives and around in the park from where where I used to live with my children and he was an elderly gentleman I mean you know he died alone in a park in the heat um, now what has gotten to me about everything is that you know my family's at risk in different areas um, you know different states uh, but so are other people's families and then also on top of that I'm a little bit confused as to what the world has come to when yesterday I posted it uh, Melbourne thought it was their right the council the government thought it was their right to physically remove homeless people from public places public places they didn't walk into people's homes and private residences and private businesses you know they walked into public locations to try to get near air conditioning and out of the heat and not die and to get shade and you know under shade things in malls and all that kind of stuff and you know whoever's high and mighty decision it was to go in there and just remove them like they were even less important than your pet animals that you are told on the news to keep indoors keep well and truly watered and comfortable so they don't die in the heat so our homeless are now worth less than our animals and our pets and farm animals and stock. You know, there's gonna be a massive uproar about that. <laughs> Apparently there was a fair amount of sheep that died on those stupid looking boats that they send them over live, you know, the live trade. Oh, I'm so against that. And yet it's all right to physically and forcefully remove defenseless, homeless people from public places who are trying to survive the heat, put their lives at risk. Now any deaths in Melbourne, I would like for them to be honest with the statistics. I would like for them to say, well, you know, yeah, that gardener from that Christian school had a heart attack. We all heard about him on the news and how everyone was praying for him. But the people that have suffered, had heart attacks and all other things happened to them, ended up in hospital and possibly died. How many of them were the homeless people that were forcefully removed? And one thing that really gets up my eyes. Are we now so cold, so selfish? Why didn't Melbourne, Melbournians, when they found this out, walk out their front doors, whether it be at their homes, businesses, on the train platforms, whatever, all at one time and just scream out loud. They are people too. We will not allow this to happen in our city. Why didn't they kick up a stink? Why didn't they stand up for the people that are utterly defenceless? Because they have nothing, they have nobody. They don't even have a roof over their heads. You know, I mean, what the hell is going on with this world really? I, People say to me, Phyllis, stop getting so involved with everything else because it's tearing me apart. But if I won't, and no one else does, who will? 
you know, posting on Facebook, making little comments about, oh, that's horrible, that's terrible, that's evil, oh my God, how can that happen? WTF and all this kind of stuff that happens. It doesn't help them. It doesn't make a bloody difference, does it? So I'm going to jump down the throats of the people that, when I find out the actual people responsible, the ones who ordered it and the ones who enforced it. And I'm going to blast them. I'm going to, I'm going to do that. They're walking out my door and screaming it out. And I'm not even, everyone thinks I live in Melbourne. I don't live in Melbourne. But I'm going to do the action. I might not be able to walk out here and do it and have them hear me there, but I can do it there and I can do it by contacting the people responsible for it and saying, how dare you? How dare you? I will not allow it. And then we can all join together, huh? Anyone who actually really truly gives a damn, do it. Contact them personally and say, I will not allow it to happen ever again. The homeless are to be offered shelter. The homeless are to be offered liquid, water, soft drink, I don't care, orange juice, fruit juice, cordial, ice blocks, icy poles, ice creams, air conditioning. They are to be welcomed in public places because guess what? They are public. They are public people. They are the public just as much as we are. We're all the same. The only difference is they don't have a roof over their heads. So there's always something that gets me going when I'm down because there's always someone worse off than me. And you know, worrying about my family, I can do that. You know, everybody has that, you know, you worry about your family, but I worry about everyone else as well. And so I'm going to uh, track them down, hunt them down, find out who's responsible for it, and I'm going to go right off. Politely, you know that, I don't, you know, do me swears and what nots and stuff like that or chuck tandies. I do it with grown up language. Big words, I find big words and I find words as an example. <coughs> Where is your compassion? I ask the question straight and direct. I don't dilly dally around the bush. Are we not humanity? When do pets become more important than a human being's life out there? Adults, children, teenagers, old people. You know, so there's that. And then, oh, <laughs> don't watch TV, Phyllis, don't do it. You, you, I, if you watched my post, you know I posted about it, but that's one thing, because you sort of, you know, a little bit isolated from it but then I watched it and I went no you bloody well don't the disabled mm. did I not say the Abbott government will force disabled people to work no matter how seriously disabled they are it was on I think it's today tonight or I say I don't know I will have to double check I recorded it and I kept it Hello. And, um, you know, I knew it was coming and I was warning everyone it was coming and everybody doesn't listen to me. I think they're just sick of me or they don't believe me or they think, where's, where's your proof? Where's your evidence? And then it comes out on the telly. Just because I get it five minutes before, you know, or a day before or three days before or a month before or even a year before, or I know it because I'm uh, in those situations, like I've got a disabled child, I've got disabilities myself and I, I, I am not on disability I will do that only as a last resort when I can't function anymore and I need someone to care for me you know so I'm not ripping off the system 
but if they come a hunting for my daughter and just say, no, she can work anywhere. And then they had the thing where it's, they were getting paid a dollar an hour. Proven, found out for real as, like I said, slave labor. Treating our most vulnerable as slave labor. And I was disallowing that to happen to my daughter. I had outreach workers going on and on and on at me. You know, for my daughter to work here, there and everywhere else. And that's what it was, slave labor. And I am not going to have my daughter used in that situation. If she does the work of the person standing next to her, she gets paid the weight of the person standing next to her. Simple as that. If not, rack off. Leave my daughter alone. And if they think that she can just be thrown to the wolves out there, put in a risky situation, put under threat of sexual exploitation, and more, bring it on. Because if I can go out there out of my zone of safety to fight for the Ballarat Children's Home Orphanage side and the murdered children and for us, we've got Australian Stolen Generation, Child Migrants, etc. You know, and Malays, which nobody seems to have gotten on, brought them completely into the fold, which I'm really miffed about still, our new Stolen Generation. Um, then I can go out there fighting for whatever I damn well want to and I will 